Thanks so much for checking out my video. Uh, in this, I'm going to try and explain how I wrote programs, my style. Um, it will vary based on if you've been taught already a certain style or you're just beginning. This might help, but anyways. So let's say, and all this is going to pertain to a, um, a Haas CNC lathe. Um, I ran three of them. So uh, the ones that I ran were older models from um, 1999 to 2002 models. So we had the old CRT monitors and then we bought a, an SL10 that had the, the nice, nice monitor. But um, long story short, the newer machines may be way different than this stuff I'm about to say, or they may be similar. So I really don't know. But I'm just if you work at a shop that has older machines, this very well could help. Okay. As you can see, all this nonsense, and if you're new and you're gonna be like, I don't even know what the heck all this stuff is. Well, I'm going to try and break it down as easily as I can. Uh, let's begin. Say you're at your job and you're new and you want to take a super simple piece of stock. And I'm going to assume that your machine that, you're, um, that you have, you already have a cutting tool in there um, and for this purpose I'm just gonna just make up a part um, I'm calling these the jaws of the chuck uh, unless you you don't have a chuck on your lathe and you just have a regular uh, uh, like a 16c or a 5c collet but for this purpose I'll just say chuck and say you got a part I don't know. You just want, you just want to make a real simple. Just I want to cut it. I want to turn the OD. I want to get up and get out of the way, and that's all I want to do. Okay. So, we'll just for instance, say we're using two inch diameter stock. You grab the bar stock, and whether or not you're going to run one part or five hundred, um, we have to figure out. Okay, is it going to go through the spindle? You have to. You will have to run a liner that's appropriate for that because if you don't, you're going to get a ton of vibration, which not good. So, okay, forget that for now. Let's get into writing the program. Now, the Haas manual has examples of programs written already, and that's where I began on writing stuff. And then I would tweak it to my style as I got more and more comfortable. So, when you're first writing the program, you have your piece of stock in the machine. I have to tell it now how to cut it. So, in when you first start beginning, um, I know like when you we put our stuff on a, a little disc as far as uh, all the programs. It starts off with a percent sign. Why that is, I don't know. That's just the way it is. And then on your second line, me personally, I always wrote down what are known as default values. And you're going, all right, what's that nonsense? I'm gonna tell you. I'm working in G54, which means G54 is going to be this sur this surface right here. Not this is just a lead-in as far as say you had extra stock and you, may, you know, pretend that's not there now. You made a cut. That's going to be my G54 surface. And then you go into um, uh, the page on, on offsets where your G54 is and your Z face measure. 
and then everything else from there is going to be based off from that where that is all your tools so when you're making your cuts and drilling everything g54 everything's based off of that plane um, that's kind of the easiest way to say it I always put down I did a G80 which was a can cycle cancel so if you later in the program if you had a can cycle going most of the time you'll have a cancel afterwards but if you forget and when the program loops back up this will cancel it out G99 is inches per revolution which that's what you use on a lathe which is how many thousands of an inch am I cutting off per revolution G97 is a constant surface speed cancel so uh, and we'll, we'll see that in a minute and then usually you would have a I didn't put it on here usually when you're when you are at the controller writing this stuff you're hitting G54 G18, G80, G99, G97, and a block, enter. That's after every line, you're going to have what is known as an end of block, and then you're going to hit the enter key. So on my second line, I always made notes. Um, I would tell myself, because sometimes I wouldn't come back to this job, maybe a year down the road. And sometimes on the print, you'd make a note, but uh, I always thought it was kind of cool just to put it right in here. You just put it in parentheses and write your notes uh, and say, well, I did this, um, I used this tooling, um, I needed to do something, and then parentheses, end of block, done. Next line, this is where you're going to call up your tool. Tool 1, offset 1. Because I'm going to assume it could be whatever tool. Usually in a Haas lathe, it depends which one you have. Uh, our, our lathe had uh, 10 pockets and uh, the other lathe had 12. Yeah. So tool one, we'll say, is our facing cutter for roughing off the part as far as just, you know, if there's a big bunch of uh, build up and just rough it off, rough off the OD. So I'm going to use tool one, <clears throat> and you always use. You don't have to. I always use the the offset one. Well, you're going to do a skin pass. You're going to mic up the piece and then enter that value, and that'll give you the value for one as far as, as, far as offset one as far as the value from from spindle center line to all the way wrapping it back up. So you're doing tool one and then zero one. And then in parentheses, I always wrote down what did I do? I rough face and skin term, parentheses, and a block. So the next line underneath, I always put what tooling I'm using as far as the holder. Uh, in this example, we used to use like a NWL NR dash 432 MS. That's in parentheses and a block. So that just told me that this brand of tooling was an uncoded um, insert, carbide insert. And that could vary. You could have so many different tools for roughing and facing. This is just for this example. Okay, now here's where it starts getting a little, hopefully not too crazy as far as understanding. You need, you need spindle speeds and where you're going to wrap it to. When you're beginning, I know, like, I had no clue on who am I going to set RPMs to. I don't know. But in time, you kind of figure that stuff out. So, I mean, for this example, I'll just... I mean, I'll just use 3,000 RPMs. So I know I don't want the machine to go higher than 3,000 RPMs. So you put what is known as a G50. 
all that means is when the machine is going down, making the cut, the machine actually goes faster and faster, and I'll explain that in a minute. And I don't want it to go past 3,000 RPMs. So that was always the first thing I put in after my tool call. The second line, well, okay, I got to turn the spindle on to get going. I'm like, I'm over here, so let's turn the spindle on. G97S, which stands for spindle speed, 500 M03. That turns on the spindle forward. And 500 RPMs, that could be whatever. That's just, it's just to get it started. You don't have to start at 2000. That's, you can, but I never did. So, okay, we got the spindle starting. My turret is still way over here at the home position. Okay, now I'm going to do a rapid move. I want to get from home over to here. Ah, 